Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan, and I'd like to spend a few minutes speaking to you about my perspectives on psychiatric medications, which I began to investigate based on my perceptions of the severe limitations of this treatment model. So I'll tour you through four tenets that I appreciate in my daily practice. So the first is that depression is not a serotonin deficiency. As somebody who writes and lectures about inflammatory and nutrient-driven models of depression, it surprises me to learn how much of the population believes that serotonin deficiency causes depression. And this notion first came into existence through observations of medication side effects in tuberculosis patients. But in six decades since, we have yet to confirm in human studies the role of the monoamines, serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine, or the 100 other neurochemicals in depression. And this has led leaders in the field to begin to admit that we need to abandon the monoamine hypothesis, which makes sense because high levels of serotonin and low metabolite have been associated with very undesirable outcomes such as suicide and bulimia. And we know that the use of L-tryptophan, an amino acid that is a precursor to serotonin, only changes mood states when it is used in patients who have been previously treated with antidepressants. So you might wonder, well, how is it that antidepressants work so well? And that brings me to the second tenet, which is that the active placebo effect is responsible for antidepressant benefit. And this is an idea that was pioneered through the research of Dr. Irving Kirsch, which demonstrated that up to 73% of the perceived benefit of antidepressants is attributed to the active placebo effect and the passage of time. And the active placebo effect is when in a clinical trial, a patient becomes aware that they are not receiving placebo, that they are receiving the treatment, and they become aware of that through the side effects that they are experiencing. And when he uncovered unpublished data, more than half of which was negative in nature, and included that, this, even this benefit disappeared. And even in the most severe depression, one point on a 52-point scale was all that distinguished treatment from placebo. And this one point could easily be attributed to side effects rather than the actual me mechanism of the medication. So you can see how we have a scientific vacuum here. And in psychiatry, there are no objective tests to diagnose. We use a manual that's a, a you know, list of descriptors. And we have created an opportunity for pharmaceutical companies to infect a vulnerable host. And what I mean by that is that we have patients who are suffering, they're looking for answers, and they're looking for a cure. And they are led to believe by direct-to-consumer advertising that all of these things are known and available. So what are the problems with this, with the placebo effect? Well, that leads me to the third tenet, which is that these medications cause significant and lasting perturbations to the nervous system. And this happens because when you're chronically exposed to a pharmaceutical product, your body makes adaptations to accommodate that. It creates a new normal state rather than actually resolving a pathology. And when you discontinue a medication, the adaptation back to previous baseline can be very difficult. And this has been termed a relapse. And data suggests that those who are treated with medications relative to those who are not are much, much more likely to relapse. And in fact, moreover, they're more likely to experience decline in functioning and a compromised quality of life long term. And there has never been a study that has demonstrated that medication treatment long term provides better outcomes. So this brings me to my fourth and final tenet, which is that there is a better way. Through personalized diagnostics and lifestyle medicine, you can identify the actual root cause of a depression and intervene naturally for lasting outcomes. So thank you so much for listening.